and we're back. Welcome back to the Premier League prediction series. After what has been an unbelievable week on the channel, we have received no less than 500 new subscribers over the course of the last seven days. So thank you to all of you that have subscribed over the course of this European week. And best believe we are covering all 54 European matches coming up next week across the Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League. So if you aren't already subscribed, get yourself subscribed down below the bottom of this video. And while you're down there, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well if you do enjoy all of my predictions. Now, we have got once again 10 Premier League matches for you this week. But before we talk about them, let's talk about how we've actually got on over the course of this week. There were, of course, 10 Premier League games last weekend with the results coming in that we got 6 out of 10 last week and 2 correct scores last week with the Villa Wolves game and the Southampton Ipswich game. That means our overall results so far this season are 29 out of 50 for the Premier League and 7 correct scores. And then when you put on top of that all of the League Cup predictions and all of the Europa League predictions, we have got 130 out of 216 predictions right so far this season with 13 correct scores. That one extra one coming last night in the Europa League from Roma against Bilbao. Now, it is time to talk about 10 games in Premier League game week six. So without any further ado, let's get into it. And I really do think this is a tough week of predictions to call. And as always, you guys can let me know your thoughts on these 10 games by checking out the community page where all of the 10 fixtures will be there for you to vote on as to who you think is going to win or if you think it's going to be a draw then obviously click on a draw and like I said that link will be available at the top of the screen in the bottom of the description and at the end of this video as well. So let's get into it starting off with the first game of the weekend it is Newcastle and Manchester City in the early kickoff on Saturday. Now, Newcastle finally lost last weekend. I say finally lost because I think even the most hardcore Newcastle fan could admit that they've not played very well so far this season and have managed to just sort of get away with the results. Manchester City, of course, high profile game against Arsenal last week, ending in that dramatic late equaliser from John Stones after the red card and the 10 men and the injury to Rodri and all of the drama in that match. Hopefully this one will be a little bit easier for them. But saying that, these sides met a lot last season. And Manchester City did struggle. But in fact won three out of the four times that they played last year. So favourites as always will be Manchester City. But like we've already discussed... Rodri is now out for the season. De Bruyne is still a major doubt for this one as well. So their two highest profile players, arguably, in their team are probably going to be missing for this one. So there's an opportunity for Newcastle here. But even with their problems, because of how poor Newcastle have been so far this season, I'm still going to go for the City win. And I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to go for 2-1 because they've still got Foden and Savinio and Grealish and Doku and Bernardo Silva, etc, etc, etc. So I still think City will win, but I think it's going to be a lot tighter if it wasn't for the fact that Rodri and De Bruyne are not going to play. Speaking of players not playing, Arsenal going into this game have obviously Trossard suspended after the red card against Manchester City. Raya is now injured, arguably their best player so far this season. Calafiori and Timber are doubts. Ben White should play, although they didn't want to play him against Manchester City last week, but had to after the red card from Trossard. Erdegaard is still injured. Zinchenko is still injured. And then they've got all of the other long-term injuries like Tomiyasu, Mikel Marino, Kieran Tierney, etc, etc. So a whole host of players missing for Arsenal. The only good news for them is that they're playing Leicester, who haven't particularly done great so far this season. Yes, they've had their moments, but they're not getting many points. They're away to Arsenal. Arsenal have won all of the last five meetings between these two sides. And even with all of their concerns, I think everyone will be a bit shocked if Arsenal don't get the result here. So I'm going to go for 2-0. Again, like with the City-Newcastle game, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious, purely because of how many injuries Arsenal have got. But realistically, they should be beating Leicester at home. That then brings us to Brentford against West Ham. Two sides currently sitting in the bottom half of the Premier League table. And the question we have to ask is, can Brentford do it for any period of time after 23 seconds? Because that's how it's gone the last two weeks. 22 seconds, goal scorer gets injured, game over. 23 seconds, goal scorer gets injured, 
game over. It looks like Visser is still going to be out for Brentford in this game, but Mbermo should be available for West Ham. They now obviously have Alvarez suspended. West Ham are conceding an awful lot of goals at the moment. Obviously, three to Chelsea at home last week, then five at Anfield in the Cup in midweek, although even the Liverpool players were admitting that that was a bit of a false result from Liverpool because West Ham apparently did play very well. I can't comment. I didn't watch the game. So I'm going to err on the side of caution once again. In this fixture's last two seasons, the home side won both games. So I'm going to go that way once again, and I'm going to go for a 2-1 win for Brentford. Speaking of Chelsea, they are the focus of our next game. They're taking on Brighton at Stamford Bridge. And despite Brighton's good start to the season, they still remain unbeaten, but have had three draws in a row, where if Chelsea have just really started to go from strength to strength over the last few weeks, Building on their results, obviously, like I said, 3-1 at West Ham last weekend. Comfortable win, changing their entire lineup against Barrow in midweek. Brighton, like I said, three draws in a row. Jao Pedro is confirmed to be missing this one as well. So I do think, despite how well Brighton have played, I think their unbeaten run is coming to an end here at Stamford Bridge. And I'm going to go for 3-1 to Chelsea. That then brings us to Everton and Crystal Palace. Two sides who are completely winless so far this season. Everton have looked a little better in their last couple of games, but the results still aren't there for them. In terms of goals conceded, despite both sides without being without a win, Crystal Palace have conceded half the goals that Everton had. And obviously last week, Dean Henderson was a big reason for that against Manchester United. I do really struggle to see which side is actually going to win this. It's going to be one of those games where it comes down to a moment, a mistake, one piece of brilliance. And right now, I just, I really don't know. This is such a horrible fixture to call, given how poor both of these sides have been. I am going to go for a 2-1 win to Everton. They are missing the vast majority of their defence with the likes of Branthwaite, Nikolenko, Seamus Coleman, all unavailable. So maybe that could just tip things in Crystal Palace's favour. But I've just gone for the bog standard 2-1 home win. It's a horrible, horrible one to call this. But I'm going to go for Everton. The final three o'clock kickoff sees two sides that are now in the top half of the table. And it is Nottingham Forest and Fulham. Nottingham Forest still without a defeat. Remain unbeaten so far this season. But crucially for them in the battle of what was supposed to be the two former under-21 attacking midfielders. Morgan Gibbs-White is suspended for Nottingham Forest and obviously Emil Smith-Rowe is flying for Fulham so far at the start of this season. And I do think the loss of Gibbs-White is going to play a huge factor in this game. Maybe not necessarily. When these two sides met last year, the home side won both games. But I just, like I say, I really do think that the loss of Gibbs-White could play a major factor. If he was fit, I'd go for a Forest win. Fit, if he was available, should I say, rather than suspended, I would go for a Forest win. But with him missing, I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. Both sides are free scoring at the moment. You know, Forest going to Brighton and getting a 2-2 draw is a great result. Fulham beating Newcastle 3-1 at home is a great result. So they're both playing well. They both merit a result here. I'm going for a 2-2 draw. Final game on Saturday sees Wolves taking on Liverpool in the late kickoff. Wolves are currently bottom of the Premier League table. That is purely on alphabetical order. Them and Everton are both on the same number of points with five goals and 14 conceded. Wolves are purely bottom on alphabetical order. But they are still bottom. They haven't got a win. They're not playing particularly well. Liverpool are absolutely flying. They're in second. Their only blip so far this season was that home defeat to Nottingham Forest. Allison is still going to be unavailable for this one. And now Mosquera is obviously out for the season for Wolves. Defensively, they look all over the place. They're still scoring goals, Wolves, both in the Cups and in the leagues, but they're not winning matches. And Liverpool are scoring goals for fun and are blowing teams away. And unfortunately, I think it's going to be another really long day at home for Wolves. I'm going to go for 4-1 to Liverpool in the late kickoff on Saturday. Moving on to Sunday then. The first game in that on Sunday is Ipswich taking on Aston Villa. Ipswich, of course, managed to get that perfect last-minute equaliser, that deflected shot from Morsi against Southampton. 95th-minute equaliser to get the draw against Southampton. That was able to move them just above the relegation zone, but they are still without a win in the Premier League. Aston Villa, of course, absolutely flying again. The question will remain, is John Duran ever going to get a start? 
Or also, does he need a start? Because every time he comes on, he still scores goals. And look, against a side like Ipswich, with the greatest of respect to Ipswich Town, they are playing some good football. But like we've spoken about with a couple of the other teams, they're not getting the results. Villa are getting the results. They do have some players suspended. As, uh, not suspended. They do have a few players that could be potentially injured for this one. John McGinn looks like he's going to be out. Now it looks like Digne could be missing. Diego Carlos has been added to their list of injuries in defence as well. So I think the defensive frailties are still going to be there for Villa. But the attacking talent is still going to be there. So I'm going to go for 3-1 to Aston Villa. Then we have the main event fixture of the weekend. It is Manchester United against Tottenham in the late kickoff on Sunday. Both these sides played in Europa League action this week. Slightly unfair in terms of Spurs' perspective that Manchester United got to play 24 hours earlier. But Manchester United drew at home with 11 men. And Tottenham won 3-0 at home with 10 men after Dragashin was sent off after less than 10 minutes. And then they won 3-0 with 10 men against Carabag. As always, my concern with Manchester United is how are they going to score goals? Because it's just not been happening for them on a regular basis. On the flip side, the goals that United have been conceding have been down to mistakes. So if they can iron out the defensive mistakes, I would still back them to have a good defensive display against Tottenham here. So... It's such an imbalance in terms of what could happen in this game. And Spurs got the draw at Old Trafford last season and then beat Manchester United at the White Hart Lane, whatever they call it, the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last season. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. And I don't know if that's just my Manchester United bias getting the better of me. I would still expect United to beat Spurs as a Manchester United fan because, as the old saying goes, lads, it's only Spurs. Uh, but to be honest, at the moment, there's going to be a lot of fans saying, lads, it's only Manchester United because we've only scored five goals in the Premier League this season. But we'll see. My reaction, as always, will come as soon as I get home. I'm out to watch this game on Sunday, so it'll probably be a later reaction on Sunday for my response to this game. But I'm going to go for the draw. I don't back Manchester United to get the result here. And if anything, I think Spurs probably have more chance of winning this than United do, given the recent run of form. That just leaves the Monday night football between AFC Bournemouth and Southampton. Now, despite Bournemouth actually looking pretty good on the pitch, again, the results haven't really been there. It's only been one win for Bournemouth so far this season and two draws. Southampton, on the other hand, were just seconds away from getting their first win of the Premier League until that aforementioned Morsi equaliser for Ipswich. So they still sit way down at the bottom of the Premier League table. Jack Stevens is still suspended following his horror tackle on Garnacho against Manchester United. So it's not looking great for them. Bournemouth, certainly at home against Southampton, who have been poor. I would expect Bournemouth to get the result. And I'm going to go for a 2-0 win for Bournemouth to round off today's predictions. As always, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments section below. Very, very interesting set of matches this week. And like I've already mentioned, don't forget to check out the community page where you can have your say on all 10 of these fixtures in the screen right now. Thank you very much for watching as always. Thank you very much for listening if you've been doing this through the podcast medium. I'll be back, like I said, on Sunday night following the Manchester United-Tottenham game. I will see you there.